Hello bass clarinet players. Today I'm going to teach you how to do high notes. Again, I did this video once but I'm redoing it because that video was kind of all over the place and um, my room's not pink anymore and I wanted to show that off. <laughs> so we're going to go over it in a little more detail hopefully. Um, so yeah, getting to the basics. High notes are not what most clarinet players would think of them at first. You know, as you get higher on a clarinet, you're covering less holes. But high notes are not following that same logic necessarily. Um, at least when you get to the beginning of the second register, they are not following that logic. It's good to know. So, hopefully you know from your low F to your, what you think is a high B flat. If you don't know all those notes, you might want to learn those um, before coming here. So that's the first thing you probably should do. If you're coming from B flat clarinet, then I'm assuming you know them because they're very common. If you're coming, you know, new to clarinet on bass clarinet, you might not know as many notes, especially if you didn't come from a previous woodwind like a flute or something, or a saxophone, because the fingerings tend to be pretty similar. Um, so high notes, I'm going to show you, okay, I'm going to do it without showing you first, so you can be like, whoa, what's going on? And then I can explain it. You're like, what just happened? That was really high, especially for a bass clarinet. Um, it can get higher, but what I did was, I'm probably not going to be able to get this in here. You see the thumb hole, or key in this case? There is a key right above it. You're going to want to cover that too. And how to do that is slide your thumb up a little bit when you're playing, and you can cover both. So that's literally all there is to it as far as the technical process of doing high notes. Um, how high does it raise your notes? An octave and a fifth. So you want to think of it as, you know, an octave, G to G. And then a fifth is, count your G as one. One, two, three, four, five. And that note is a D. So you see that's a D. Um, so an octave and a fifth. And don't worry about counting fifths, you know, in a scale because you don't have to follow a real scale. Um, just raise it five notes. And most of the time that's gonna work. So say I wanted to do a high C. Um, I'm gonna do my low F and then raise it up. Uh, I'm gonna count one as my F, two, three, four, five. I got a C and that is a C. So it worked again. Um, it'll work on every note as far as I know. I'll check later. <laughs> so that's how you know what note a high note is going to be, or at least that's how I used to figure it out. Um, as soon as you memorize what notes they are, you know, you can stop doing this and it'll be a lot less painful. <laughs> now, as far as actually making them come out, there's a little more to it than you might think. It's a little more than just playing the same way as you do on the low notes. It requires a pretty different voicing. Um, first things first, you want to make sure you don't have a what I call a weak one sound, meaning the sound that most people do when they're starting out. So you don't want to have a you don't want to have that type of sound, the airy, breathy, empty sound, or your high notes are going to come out, if at all, they're going to come out even worse. You're going to get that crap, and that's not good. Um, so what you want to do is make sure your embouchure is tight. What I mean is your bottom lip has to be pretty tight on the mouthpiece, and you want to kind of bite down on the top of the mouthpiece, but not too much. Don't strain it. 
Just do it as much as you can with it still being comfortable. A second step is put in more air, and you should get a very much improved sound. Um, you will get a as opposed to a because nobody wants that. And so if you can get that sound on a lower register, a full, good, not crappy sound, then your high notes should come out better. Especially if your armature is tighter. That's the key. If it's not tight, it doesn't matter how much air you put in, it's going to be crap. So I'm going to play it like a rookie would, a very beginning rookie. And it doesn't sound pleasant, does it? If I try doing a high note, nothing. So don't come into high notes when you don't even know what you're doing as far as armature, or you're not going to get anything out. That's just how it's going to be. Um, so you want to make sure you have everything straight before you <laughs> come into high notes. Um, now that you probably know how to do them, I've shown you, and I've actually done it, and I've shown you what note is going to turn into what. Um, now it's time to practice. Just follow along with me, or just look back at this video when you're actually doing it later. I don't care. Um, we'll start with a low G. Hopefully you know how to do that. Um, that's one of the easiest high notes to get out. So first do a G, and then try doing a D. If it doesn't come out, then it's probably going to sound like... And that means your armature isn't tight enough, and or... You're just not putting enough air into it. So it does require a little bit of work to get high notes out, but once you can do it, it's fun, because you can play... You can play a lot. Um, those didn't come out too well because I just woke up. <laughs> but... So you can play a lot of fun stuff with high notes. Um, so, again, practice. And once that comes out decently, once you can get a non-airy sound, then move on to a, what would be a low A. Just do that. And keep going one less hole until you run into trouble. Once you run into trouble, do not try skipping a note that you're having trouble with, or it's going to be even worse. Because what that means is, as you go higher up, you know, you, can, you have to use even more air, even more control. When you're at this range, the low, C, the high C, uh, high D range, you have a little bit of leeway to work with. Um, if that was the right word, you have a little bit of leg room. You can kind of, I don't want to say mess up, but you can be a little less accurate and still get a decent sound. I used my loose armature and I still got it out. So, but once you go past that, I'm going to use loose armature again. It gets bad. So once you get to, I'll say an F, it's where it starts getting a little harder and you're probably going to, at least at first, it's just going to come out and you're like, what is going on? Um, just keep practicing that note until it can come out. Do the others, and make sure you know what it feels like when they come out, and just improve upon that as you're going higher. So, it's not that hard, and that was my cat that just ran in front of the phone and scared the crap out of me, because I was looking at the screen. But, um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. That's the cat eating. But make sure you know what it feels like when you're doing those lower high notes, and you can get them out, and then improve upon that as you're going higher. That's really all there is to it. Also, one thing I should mention, so you don't get discouraged, if you're trying to do a high note, let's say an F again, because why not, 
and you accidentally come out with what you think is a squeak, don't worry, that's not a squeak, that's wrong voicing, and we'll get into that later. That is an accidental altissimo note. What an altissimo note is, is a third register of the instrument. That didn't come out too well because I'm trying to be quiet, there's still people sleeping in this house. But um, those are even higher notes, we'll get into those later. But hopefully this was helpful and happy practicing. Once you know how to do it, it's actually pretty fun using them. Um, they'll probably appear in at least high school music. I got it in junior high. I had up to a high B flat. And I, I did that during the concert. It was fun. So also, um, after junior high, I had up to an altissimo note, so not even when I was in high school, I had a high D, a double high D. So you're going to get high notes eventually, and you're going to want to know how to do them so you can, you know, show off and be like, I can do this. So hopefully this helped. If not, then email me or something. I will get in touch with you and hopefully help even more. So, my email is stephenshockley95 at gmail.com. Um, so yeah, hopefully this was helpful. If not, then we'll get more into it, I suppose. So, happy practicing.